Knights and Fisher coming up. Accra had to forego then go level of points with league leaders Bishop United. Bulu whistles has Awaku in front of him. Lovely back kill from Awaku. Great Olympics. Osebos is cross in. Would it be the opener? Nope. Certainly. Referee Bulu whistles. Awaku steps forward. There he goes. Awesome. Magnificent. Clarkson Awaku makes it 1 0 for Great Olympics. Oh my goodness. What a goal. Awaku. Everybody thought he was going to cross it for the header. But it beats the goalkeeper in his favorite side. Olympics could pop up with something and here they go Ashikwe goes in with a left footed cross to his brother another second Maxwell Abbe makes it two for Great Olympics if I want to go was better then this one is simply fantastic what a game we are having and what I that's what to win the ball from here I want the ball gets to Ashikwe he takes his time, waiting for the right opportunity to pick a pass and sees his brother arriving, Maxwell Abbey. And on the volley, first time of asking, hits it so hard. And once the ball takes the bounce off the top before reaching the goal, I always knew why he was going to struggle. But he needed to keep his eye and keep his body really fast. Patrick Razak drifting to the right. Good shot. Chest over the top. That is impressive from Patrick Razak. And Sabotri does well to keep possession of the ball and set up Patrick Razak. I thought he was going to cross there, but he went for the shot. It's always a difficult act. The danger area. Patel delivers. Goalkeeper makes the mistake. And the header from Nete onto the crossbar. And it's a goal kick. Said Salifu. And he holds his hand up to apologize. to apologize. Yeah, because once he steps off his line, goalkeeper, he should be getting something on it. He fails to do it. And Nete. Can he go past? Mudasiru. Yes, he does. Whips in across. Victor Edo, brilliant save from Sai Salifu. Again, that is the incident. Again, lovely cross into the box. Lovely whip on it. Victor Edo left on Max. Climbs well. But the boy is moving straight to the goalkeeper. Ida Sai. Osebos is lurking down the right. Michel Otto has seen Mudasiru. He puts one, two for Maxwell. Abe! Onto the roof of the net. That was close. Very close to club by Otu into his man, and once he saw the goalkeeper stepping off his line, Hansa has got Manaf calling for it. Good try, good attempt, and my goodness, that is unpardonable. You can't do this after the night. For, um, after I had to foot, was a decent strike. Goalkeeper that doesn't really do well with the save because it pushes the ball back into danger. But when he does well with his regatta, his composure, and then. Is he going for goal? There are as many as six possible players in the box of Great yeah. Olympics. Obuka's delivery. How? Oh, that was close. Nobody surprisingly got. The Afutu was going to get something on it, but he was distracted by the defender. But he Blue whistles. It's over. Olympics have carried the night. The Manchester Derby has ended in favor of Great Olympics. And for Olympics fans, I know what they'll be thinking. It's going to be repeats. Hearts of Oak is saying revenge is on the cars. Welcome once again to the GPL headquarters. And I'm, as always, joined by the prof, Jude Echampong. Jude, I'd say. Yeah, cool. cool. MC Hearts for my award, pal. Yeah, okay. Um, Elijah Kambi and the famous Elijah Kambi said, say, we're going to play this match on a low key level. Right. But it seems that uh, Accra Grand Olympics, with their general manager, Olu Boy, they are making so much noise. So, right. uh, discipline time. Don't forget, say, Olympics actually has of folks say, look, we are beating you. We want to do the double. So it's revenge time for House of Folk. Olympics want to do the double. Okay, let's find out if that's going to be the case. Let's go for a quick break. It is a GPR headquarters right here on the Star Times Channel 247 and Max TV. We'll be right back. Do you 
want to become a boss without any stress. Now, the wait is over. Max Buy Ghana Limited is here to make you a boss. Yes, join the Max Buy franchise now to create wealth, no money, no hustle, no stress, but you become a boss. Contact Max Buy now on 055-732-8352 for more details. Max Buy franchise. With no money, you become a boss. My friends wonder why I love buying TCL air conditioners. One, energy efficiency. TCL air conditioners use less power to operate, so every via no electricity bills new work from. And Unti, it helps me save some money. Two, the cooling ability. Hmm, what an inframa. So clean and hygienic. It will live very quick at any selected temperature. Noise level no so daft him. Wow. I could even hear the sound of the pin drop. Now, because noise level new work from Tino, one always enjoys a good sleep. Above all, TCL air conditioners are of the best quality, dependable and durable. And you also call Jewel Deer. TCL air conditioners are three star rated with three years warranty. TCL, the creative life. Lucky Ghana. Introducing Lucky Mall Ghana. Lucky Mall Ghana gives you the chance to become a millionaire with just a click. Lucky Mall Ghana is a new mobile lottery platform where you can win big. You can win a cash prize of 10,000 Ghana CDs, brand new car, shop ride vouchers, telco airtime, smartphones, curved TVs, MacBooks, laptops, and many other dream items. First, you need to visit www luckymall.com.gh or download the Lucky Mall app from your Google Play Store. I go in, you go in, you go in, I go in. All Star Times fans, get yourself ready for the biggest football feast this year. We proudly bring you the long-awaited UEFA Euro 2020 Championship. From June 11, 2021, watch all the games live on Star Time Sports. Star Time Sports, beyond passion. Sports Drive on Max 89.7 FM, your ultimate late afternoon show, hackage with music. Trivia, star guests, giveaways and health updates, plus your views on anything that matters to you. Sports Drive, with me, Yaan Pofo Ankara, and your number one DJ, La Posta, every Wednesday at 3 p.m. I will feel for that muscle. See a buy in chair and a magia to me. Yet in check, I see anything max 89.7 FM and a bremo. We didn't do not that quite just see. A few Jordan, a cosy fiada, a abonnon do a cosy domino. It are good years somewhere else to do max sports park air bro. It is in four cookie dine and a bubble fia. Mama bobo in semi. It is in a cow say max sports park abba abetna. Max 89.7 FM. The time has come for all to come together, to cheer on our champions, to bring back that love. It's new. 
It's bigger and it's better. It's the only league that matters. Oh, one, two, one, and why I see you. Men, you're like, I'm going to go back. Men, I see what you do. I'm going to go for four times. You know, my boys, you know, do you do know their name? They are called Flavor Boys. Yes, you are, you are, you are yet to see more flavor. Only flavor, I'm telling you. All right, welcome back. It is the GPL headquarters right here on Star Time Channel 247 and Max TV. There's a lot to talk about, no doubt about that, as the build-up for the big game continues. Derbies all over the place. The Ashanti Derby, um, Kumasa Santi Kotoko hosting Ashgold. The irony is that Ashgold will be playing on their home turf. And Accra Great Olympics hosting Accra Hearts of Oak. The question is, who are the landlords and who are the, what, land guards, as they call it? Okay, or the tenants. So here we are. Big fixtures for this weekend, GPL Week 28. They come in thick and fast. Midyama, as we say, versus Caroline United. Uh, Jude, th there, there are no easy matches this weekend. We keep saying this, but this weekend typifies what has become a very hot GPL um, season so far. Midyama versus Caroline United. A big game in the Western region. Well, it is a big game because Karela are lying fourth on the Ghana Premier League, whilst Midyama are lying fifth. But the difference is that they all have 43 points. So this must be the tiebreaker. This is where we'll probably eliminate whoever wants to be in the top four or below the top four. And for me, it's revenge time for Midiema. You see, Midiema are going through a patchy you know, season where you, I thought they could, they could be fighting for the league log. They, they could be winning games. They could be playing so well. But that has not been the case. Look at out. There's pressure on Midiema. There's pressure on the technical team and the players as well to deliver. They'll be missing Rashid Norte. And of course, Justice Blaze is not there. So it will be either Benjamin Atta, who sits in, or Eric Kwakwa. Whoever plays in that middle must, must be up and doing, must be you know, in shape and focused for that task. Again, for Karela, the man who has been banging in the ghost, dear Usia Taylor, it's, it's not with the team. It is going to haunt them. I, I don't see who will probably foot the bill or, you know, be that leader, that man who could be the predator for Karela in that game. But, of course, Midiama will start as favorite. They need this point. They need to bounce back. It's been a patchy road for them. In the last three games, they've been suffering. They, 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 they are not been playing well. And, of course, the bankroller would want them to win at all costs. And so, for me, yes, 43, 43 points. Karela on fourth position, Midiama on the fifth position. I think Midiama will have to lick frog Karela and uh, revenge for that defeat. You know, Karela beat them 2 0 in the first round. Now, there's a lot of news around. I mean, I'm just looking through, mm. there's so much happening breaking news, mm. updates, ongoing, every club. Mm. But I think Kumase Asante Kotoko, we'll talk about that first. The big one, obviously, is the news about referee George Vomawo. Mm. We, if you can recall, Kim Vaisal versus Bichem a few weeks ago, in fact, match week 25, mm. was, um, according to the report by the match commissioner and also both teams, um, what's the word to use, complaints, official protests, resulted in the match being scrutinized uh, under the microscope. And this is what the match review panel of the FA has come and they've said that the FIFA referee should have known the rules of the game better, uh, its interpretation. And for that matter, he would serve an additional year 
of suspension after the 2020-21 season. That is absolutely huge. Now, this is not a case of a referee being accused of taking a bribe. It's a, it's a match. But the incidents and the failures of referee George Vomawa are so blatant that the FA have taken this dis decision. All football-related activities for the rest of the 2021 season, for the multiple, I think the emphasis is on multiple errors he committed in the game, can Faisal versus Bicham United. And confirmation that it was match day 25. But what I'm curious to know, and of course, Jude, you will tell us, why the additional year? That's very harsh. Well, you know, like I told you yesterday, that NAS number 12 took away a chunk of our experienced referees. Some were FIFA referees, some were um, class one referees and all that. It took away all of them. These are new referees. So you would expect those who have, you know, managed to acquire the FIFA badges to improve and to show class is one of the matches that they probably, you know, officiate. But, yeah, if you're a FIFA referee and you go into a game and you do multiples of errors, that is unacceptable because we are under, under the microscope. The referees are under intense pressure. People feel the referees are the people destroying Ghana football. Every day, coaches are talking about officiating. Players are talking about officiating. So if you go in there, and especially if you're a FIFA referee, that is where you must show class. And, and these are our men. They were all, you know, taken Previously, aside. Right. Yeah, yeah. And they were all whitewashed away by, you know, the tsunami of number 12. And so it's like, it's very difficult for the referees. But still, they need to prove the point. There are a lot of new referees, obviously, as you rightly said. The experienced referees with AFCON experience, World Cup even, a uh, couple of them, they are out. Mm. And these new referees. Now, one would ask and one would say that why don't we help the referees unless there's evidence to suggest that the mistakes he committed were above and beyond professional conduct. I mean, there was something so grossly you know, unacceptable. I, your, your word is saying unpardonable, but mm. I'm thinking that we're building a new era. These referees are under a lot of pressure, mm. a lot of scrutiny. Are they being helped with technology, training, motivation, security? Are all these things in place where the referees feel that I'm going into this match 100% re regardless? Are they being given that? Because we also need to look at the flip side and ask if the referees I've been given that space to operate. The last time retired referee Alex Cote came he was here, right here. I mean, he said something, and you know, let me just remind our viewers and everybody. He said the referees are human beings; they commit errors. They look at every referee and the kind of shitting he brings on board whenever he's given the chance to show class, whatever he's made of. But yeah, when those referees are taught simple rules. And they go onto the field and they cannot exhibit things that they are taught. They feel that they are in the wrong profession. And as Alex Corte said that, even after games, they talk to referees. They try to, to motivate them. They try to teach them where you go wrong. They want to correct you. So they are doing so much behind the scenes to help these referees. We might not have you know, gotten the VARs and the gadgets probably that might help them. But hey, we've improved y'all. In, in the Ghana Premier League this season... We've seen referees with those communication gadgets. Referees that has you know that they have improved so much because they know the terrain, they know what to do, the rules of the game has been well spelled out for them to learn. They've gone through integrity check, they've gone through a lot of FIFA tests. So go there, you are human being, you can make one or two errors. But yeah, when it's a clear error and, and there are multiples in, in one game, we need to take a close look at it because. It will damage the game. It will destroy the reputation of the Ghana Premier League. And that is why, if you listen to the GFA president, Mr. Keto who always emphasized that, look, it's a difficult time for the referees, but they will have to bear with the kind of punishment the, uh, the, the match review panel comes across because, look, if they don't do that, then we are in trouble. Don't forget, Vumowo is a FIFA referee. He is suspended. But they are also... Other referees who might be suspended because that game um, Bechem played against Hasso Folk, yeah, 
The chain have reported the referee to the match review panel for them to take a good look at it. Again, Almina Sachs have also written to the FA and the match review panel to take a good look at that referee who officiated their match against us of folk. So, you know, they need to be cautioned. And, and I think it, it's, it's, it's the right thing to do. Yeah, I mean, if you can't handle the pressure at the across stadium, then where, where can you handle the pressure? But quite interesting, referee Alex Cote will be joining us um, as we continue the countdown to the final lap of the Ghana Premier League. And we continue this weekend, of course, with the big matches. There's a lot happening. That's on the referees. What about the clubs? And we move into the camp of the Porcupine Warriors. And uh, Vinicius, the other Brazilian, maybe not as um, <laughs> famous or popular as Fabio Gama, is in the news this time around. There you go. Club notice. It's been... Uh, this is the official statement from Kumase Asantukotoko following several days of uh, rumours. And then, of course... Bar uh, Bar 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 <laughs> Barreto, Barreto, yeah. sorry. Barreto did say after the FA Cup fixture that he will no longer be part of the club. So there you go. That is a statement. Asante Kotoko and Michael Vinicius have mutually parted ways. And as you can see in the statement, it goes on to say that there have been issues which have been given him. Um, he's not been allowed to give the best to the club and he's unhappy about the situation. Management, however, thought it wise to mutually terminate and help him fully focus on the present issues. We wish Michael all the best in his future endeavors. And this was signed by David Obengnyako. He's the acting communications manager of Kumase Asante Kotoko. The issues were not emphatically stated. So even with the dis uh, uh, not dismissal, departure of Michael Vinicius, Kotoko have given him a nice takeoff. <laughs> and I think we can enjoy at least two of his goals, or at least one of them. Here he is. In um, no man's land. In other words, nobody was there to occupy or disturb him. And he nudged this in. This match against Dreams FC at the Oboise Lenclay Sports Stadium. Michael Vinicius. There you go. And uh, there he is against Great Olympics. This one could have been, he could have been another hero. And he looped it over and beyond. I mean, these are the memories, I guess, fans would remember of Vinicius. Uh, your, your take. Well, I expected this, yeah. You know, he's just like the signing of Abednego Tete to House of Folk. There are players, no matter what you do, they, they, they are not the type of players to fit in the new era of Kotoko and House of Folk. Look, you bring in Vinicius Jr. or Michael Vinicius, and yeah, look at him very well. His understanding of the game, his attitude on the field of play, his positioning, the way how clinical he is as a, as a player. I don't see all this in him. So I was asking myself, who, who made that purchase? What did he see to bring him on board? Because we must see that hunger, that attitude, that flair, that finesse, that clinical. Especially of a Brazilian. Of a, Bra a, Bra a Brazilian. And I, I, and I watch him closely, you don't see that in him. Look, I will be more surprised if I don't see much more of the Kotoko strikers being given such letters. Because, yeah. Based uh, on this, this, this per the understanding or official docu you know, statement, it says that for personal reasons. So, I, I don't want to agree with that. I don't want but that, to. But that's what they've said. I, they have every right to say that, but right. I don't want to agree with that. So what would the other players be given letters? I mean, performance-wise. Non-performance. Non performance-wise. Mm. Vinicius has not proven anything to me. He scored two goals. Yes, somebody cooked that ball for him in a better position against the goalkeeper. He slotted home. Two goals, perfectly. And okay. the other one was a tapping. Brilliant. Mm. But let's look at his output. His understanding of the game, the way he comes to party, his contribution for Kotoko whenever he plays, non-existing. But I'm saying that many of the Kotoko players and many of some of House of Folk players are, are, are the wrong place. Especially a player like Evans Adomako, since he joined Kotoko, I have not seen anything from the player. I don't have anything against him. He should show class on the field. He should show his contribution on the field. He should help Kotokos by, by banging in the goals, by making sure Kotoko are playing well. His contribution is my style on the field of play. And for me, it's sad. Players like Safu Taylor, we all know him some seasons back. 
But look at his output. Anytime he's gotten the chance to show class. And, and, and you see these quarter cup players, many of them will probably leave their team. So the same thing happens to House of Folk. You made a point about you don't know who made these purchases. Of mm. course, they have a recruitment committee, recruitment board, recruitment panel, recruitment team. They are the ones who make that. And what you're basically saying, correct me if I'm wrong, is that they did not do their due diligence properly and they brought players who were not fit into the Kotoko scheme of affairs. I mean, it backfired for Vinicius. He has not proven a point to me. Adumaku has not proven a point to me. Safu Taylor has not proven a point to me. There are many of the players who have not shown probably what we expected them to show for Kotoko. And they are the reason why you see all those strikers, but it's Gani who is been banging in the goals since Kwame Opoku left. I mean, we all saw Kwame Opoku when he was playing for Kotoko. You could feel he's the typical Romana, a clinical finisher. His contributions always tell on the field. What have those players I'm mentioning got to show when they come on the field? Not even Andy Kumi, but for Andy Kumi, he's a young chap. He has been scoring, yet that, you know, when he starts, you don't see the clinical finishes, you know, that he brings on board. He's not that, that good apart from his pace, and uh, you will not see the skill. So, you know, we can manage him. He can grow. That is Andy Kumi. But the rest, Aduma Kong, Safu Taylor, Vinicius, and a couple of them have shown nothing, and they are, the, the, they are the, some of the reasons why Kotoko are struggling to, to, to bang in the goals. Well, apart from Salifu, I'm, I'm talking about Hearts of Oak, who on the same day when he was unveiled, we also had Samuel Boedou, Hearts mm. of Oak. Mm. They were unveiled on the very same day. Boedou hasn't really had, he's not had any new players come in, but he's managed to tweak things, change things, and they're beginning to flow for him. But are you saying that? Man for man, Hearts of Oak have a better squad than Kotoko. That is why Hearts are performing better. You, you would want to think so. I mean, Kotoko made a lot of purchases, bringing in new players at the start of the season. Hearts of Oak, they did bring, you know, bring in one or two players, but it wasn't as many as Kotoko did. The likes of Emmanuel Nete, Benjamin Futu were all there. I mean, in the mix, um, uh, um, uh, uh, Guma was there. Uma. Omar Guma was there. I mean, there was uh, Obi Junior. There was so they brought in quite a little number of talents. So Hearts were more um, specific and direct with their purchases. Exactly. For, right. Exactly. One player you will mention, you know, that has flopped or probably has not put in up the way we expected him to put up in the House of Folk jersey is Abed Teke. and that is why you see him always not even in the first eighteen because he has to lift up his play. Other than that, I'm sure at the end of the season. He will part ways with Hearts of Folk. But Hearts did not make the wholesale signing, bringing in players who look good, players who have the talent to, to show whatever they can also bring on board when they are you know, in the mix of the Hearts of Folk team. That is why Hearts of Folk are playing suddenly well. They brought in Caleb Amankwa, they brought in um, um, Salifu, and, and they came to do a specific job. Now, watch Hearts of Folk clearly when they go away from home. Caleb Amankwa sits in front of the defense and he is that player protect who him. will protect the back four and do all the dirty work. And, and that is why he was bought. And doesn't necessarily start at home. It's not, he's not a regular Be Because starter. at home, they don't need any defensive shield in front of their defense. They need players that can pass well, that can, you know, put those telling passes through and contribute in terms of, you know, um, 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 the contribution on, on the field of play. So you need players with that fluidity that can pass well. So you don't need that cover. I think at the end of the season, if Hearts do lift the title after over a decade you know, of droughts, they would look at their recruitment team and give them a lot of credit. Likewise, Kotoko. But in comparison mm. now, mm. it looks like Hearts have the slight advantage. It's not over, though. We've got still seven matches to go. But from what you're saying, it looks like Hearts' recruitment is beginning to yield you, dividends. You, yeah, don't forget, Hearts of Folk brought in Eric Dizan. They brought in uh, uh, Mamani Lawali. They brought in a couple of players. Some have not lived up to the billing. Or injuries. Or injuries. But when you have a chunk of them showing class, like the Victor Edus, like the Isaac Mensah, these were young chaps. And we saw them playing for in Cranston Warriors and other stuff in the Division 1. But they are showing class, they are showing attitude, and their contribution is there for everybody to see. That is why I'm saying that even if two of the House of Folk signings, and, and that's uh, Radio Voka, the Congolese international. Brilliant player. Of course, he's been superb for us to focus this season. One of the players to talk about any time they, they, they play. And, and Patrick Razak. On his day, also I mean, a very good player. Of, of course, now he's fighting for four. He's not even in the starting 11 for us to focus. And this, uh, you see Kojo Abid Jr. And, and you see, 
you know, players that can play at the highest level. Futu, Futu is Futu there. And, and, and uh, you know, these are, these are players who have shown class this season for us of folk. But if you go to Kumasi Santi Koroko, the difference is that many of the players are not showing the class they are made of. Look, a player like Augustin Okra shouldn't be struggling in terms of scoring goals. He is either injured or not playing at his peak. But he's a very good player, Augustin Okra. I mean, players like Imano Jemfi, today he's scoring, tomorrow he's, he's way off. Let me ask you before we move on to, you know, other matters. Do you think the advantage of having coached Midyama for all that while would also be a key, you know, trump card for um, Sambo Boedu because he knows the players. He's played against all these teams with Midyama, mm. so he comes to hearts, he has a better understanding. By Reto, the league level, he's now learning the ropes. It would be difficult for him to get that winning formula, especially with players he has had no hand in bringing to the club for his philosophy. Although he's not talked about philosophy, his other man, that is um, Buedu, has talked about philosophy and he reckons these players are gradually beginning to fit into his vision. I mean, with all due respect, I would want to give Barret to thumbs up. I mean, he comes into a team who went for pre-season, bought new set of players. There was no unity. There was no coercion. He, he has to bring in new fighting spirit into the team. He had to ginger them up. He had to, you know, guide them to play a certain way or probably his style of play. But why Barreto did not sack Johnson Smith and Ghazali is because... They knew the terrain. They knew the players. They, they went for preseason with those players. And that's why they are still there, to guide Barreto in making good decisions. So, Buedu might have played against Hasso Folk. But look at him. He comes in, and Hasso Folk still have the, the, the their under-15 coach, Ninoy, Samuel Ninoy, still there on the bench with him because he had gone through the mill playing seven matches for Hasso Folk, and he had made sure the ship was stabilized. And you need him around the coach. That is why when Kotoko started, it was Maxwell Kuredu, Johnson Smith, Ghazali, they were all there. Now, Maxwell Kuredu leaves, Barreto is in with his assistant coach, but there's still Johnson Smith and Ghazali. They will make things stick for him in making those decisive decisions. So, you know, you, you cannot run away from the fact that the Kotoko also have the men to show this one can play well, this one cannot play well. I mean, Barreto mentioned that Keke is a good player. Why? Because they've told him Keke was a very good player for Karela. He was one of the stars in our league. And that is why he wants to give Keke more time to, to, prove to, to prove himself. And that's why Keke now is playing so well. He scored in the MTNFA Cup. So we can't run away from the fact that Barreto is new. But he also has the men to guide him in making those decisions. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Derby is all over the place. Not just the... Uh, Gamanche Derby, or not the Gamanche, the Mancha Derby, of course, the Gamashi Derby, the big one at the Accra mm -hmm. Sports Stadium. In the Ashanti region, there's the small matter of the big game between Kumase Asante Kotoko and Ashanti Gold. And for obvious reasons, Ash Gold would want to take something away from Kotoko to stop them from getting closer to the league title. But Ash Gold have not been in form of uh, recent matches. Well, of course, I mean, they have, they have had a poor season, a very, very tough season for Ashanti Godial. I mean, if you start a season and before you play 30 matches, you have changed five coaches. That is too much for one team. I mean, this season has been tough for many clubs. But for Ashanti Gold, they've gone through something that I never expected to see with a team like Ashanti Gold. There's no consistency in terms of technical team. There's no consistency in terms of players. There's no consistency even in terms of management. And so, what do you expect? They will be struggling, and that's why they are struggling, yeah. I mean, Ashanti Gold started with a set of players. At, at the point in time, Hans Kofi was leading the attack. Where is Hans Kofi now? At yeah. the point in time, they had Richard Osayajimai, their stalwart at the back. He's even not featuring for them anymore. So, things have changed. A lot of players have come in. And as, you know, you can see, Ash Gold, I don't know their target. But you hear Thomas Dria saying, we know we can't go for the league trophy. So, our focus on the MTNFA Cup. For me, that's a shame. 
That should tell you that they're having a, such a poor season. That should tell you that they are nowhere near where they usually are. And for Ashanti Gold, they will need to turn the screws all around again because playing against Kumasi Ashanti Kodoko is no joke. Kotoko are really bust up for that game. They are ready for that game. And Kotoko want to bounce back. Just before we came into the studio, Felix Anand, who is the captain of Kotoko, said that they are turning things around and they are going to give Hassel Folk a run for their money because they'll be beating Ashanti Go hands down. And that should, that should tell you they are, they are really ready and focused for that game because he made an emphatic statement. We are beating Ashanti Gold. And Ashanti Gold have been in poor form. If Legon Cities can travel from Accra and beat you at the Lincoln Stadium, why not Kotoko? They have everything at, the, at their disposal to dismantle Ashanti Gold because Ash Gold themselves are not playing so well. It is granted, before we go for the break, quick one. Before, let's get this clarification. You talk of Great Olympics and you hear... Um, people say, oh, His Excellency Amaka Amatefiu, oh, Kujufianu is now on board, um, Oluboy Komodo has experience, blah, blah. They mention names, even on social media, they've changed. You look at Ashgold, you can't really see any hearts. You talk of Togwe Afede, Alhaji, Akambi, mm. the controversies around it, the, the Frank Nelsons. Ashgold, who are the men helping <laughs> management to run the show? You do need these men on the ground. Exactly. And for, for Ash Gould, it is Dr. Kweku Frimpon and the son Emmanuel Frimpon. And who's helping them? Um, Professor Kwesi Darling. Um, and, you know, he was the CEO for Bicham United some seasons back. He is now the sporting director for Ashanti Gould. And they are, you know, the men to talk about anytime Ashanti Gould are playing. But it's not good enough. Okay. That's a question answered. Let's go for another break. When we come back, your chance to also get in on the conversation. There's so much to talk about. And perhaps your predictions for any of the derbies, the Ashanti, the Western region, the new boys, the entire lives versus Legon cities. And of course, the big one in the capital, Accra Great Olympics versus Accra Zavu. We'll be back in just a bit. Introducing Lucky Mall Ghana. Lucky Mall Ghana gives you the chance to become a millionaire with just a click. Lucky Mall Ghana is a new mobile lottery platform where you can win big. You can win a cash prize of 10,000 Ghana CDs, brand new car, shop ride vouchers, telco airtime, smartphones, curved TVs, MacBooks, laptops, and many other dream items. First, you need to visit www. LuckyMall.com.gh or download the Lucky Mall app from your Google Play Store. I go in, you go in, you go in, I go in. Lucky Want to become a boss without any stress? Now the wait is over. Max Buy Ghana Limited is here to make you a boss. Yes, join the Max Buy franchise now to create wealth, no money, no hustle, no stress, but you become a boss. Contact Max Buy now on 055-732-8352 for more details. Max Buy franchise. With no money, you become a boss. What I have to tell Accra as a focus, um, they should watch out. The different Accra Great Olympics. The um, squad we brought in the first round, or the tactics we brought in the first round, is going to change this time around. And they are going to see the different Accra Great Olympics. That's all I want to tell um, Accra as a focus. We are coming for the three points. Yeah, that's Mudasiru. And uh, when I went to the training ground earlier this week, I could hear Lukaku, Lukaku, and I was, I'm, I was wondering, is, is he around? But no, on the light. So that's his nickname. His, Mudasiru, and he says that they've changed tactics. It's good that the players, ironically, Olympics, <laughs> are talking more. And Hearts Vogue have decided to keep it low-key. But I can assure you that Hearts Vogue, before the game, will tell us their peace of mind. We have a big 
man coming into the studio to join us and give us um, what we should look forward to on Sunday. But Jude, quite interestingly, Olympics, even though they won in the first leg, are the underdogs again? Well, they will be the underdogs because of the form of House of Folk and because House of Folk are seated comfortably on the summit of the league log. But hey, for Olympics, they have all it takes to surprise House of Folk. I mean, they are talking tough. But you look at Olympics when they played against Karela. They went down by a goal, but they had the character to come back. All season, what has do or done the magic for Olympics has been their character. And all season, what has been the form for Hearts of Oak is the results, especially in their last seven, or to be precise, their last five. Obviously, the draws away in the last five is something that no team has been able to do. And it, it, it looks scary for opponents. <laughs> but for Olympics, they say it's appetizing. This is what they want. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The Olympics are not scared of House of Folk. Yeah. But they should be with this. No, they, they are not because they whipped them 2-0 in the, in the first round. That was then. They will be bored up with that result. This is, this is a different animal now. Exactly. But see, yeah. Olympics are just five points behind House of Folk. If they should beat them, it will be the first time House of Folk has been... Beating, you know, in twice in the Ghana Premier League. And then Olympics would have closed that five-point gap to two. And those two defeats against Adriana Stars and Ashgold mm. de denied them of six points, which would have actually given them a one-point lead at the top of the GPL had they, were they able to win those two games. Well, sometimes Olympics, you know, they, they take their leg off the accelerator. I mean, against Adriana Stars, it was a game I thought they could have won. But... I mean, you were leading 2-0. And it was left with about 11, 12 minutes to the end of the game. And they went to sleep. Complacency, swollen headed. they quite a while. Exactly. Wafa, they were, would the series save them in mm. the end? So, so, they need to be focused. Just keep pushing and keep making sure the game is over. Against as of Folk, when they won 2-0, check the game. Olympics were all over the place. They kept fighting for every 50-50 ball. They were, they were in there for victory. You could, you could sense it. And that's how come they had that good day. If Olympics come into this game with that attitude, that mentality that Hasso Folk can be beaten. Look, Hasso Folk had, you know, had a very good time because one year. None of their players has gotten injured. They have their first 18 always intact. So, Buedu will always have to make one, two change in it, terms of form. Isn't it ironic that in the past you would say that Hasso Folk and Kotoko controversy, drama, infighting, power play... Their stability, and we're not hearing much. The last bit of drama was Alaji Kambi, but that's been resolved. Exactly. And they seem to be steady. Yes, they are. But Hazel Folk, of course, are really hungry for the trophy now. After 11 years, they need this trophy badly. And that is why, after they got their groove on, they are still, you know, in that drive. They don't want to, to, to get away from that, that, that path they are, they are on now. Look, it will be a very good game. But I still feel Olympics can surprise them. Okay, 0302750310. Ebenezer is already on the line. Hello, Ebenezer. What's on your mind? Hello, Yao. I'm calling from Ashaman, Zenu. Ashaman. Zenu. Excellent. Yes, this is Ebenezer. We are beating Olympics without rain or shine. 2-0. Okay. 2-0. And Kotoko is losing. Yes, 2-0. So that's revenge. Yes, we are beating them 2 0. Okay. Whether rain or shine. All right, thank you very much, Ebenezer thank from you. Zenu in uh, Ashaiman. 2 0, mm. which I've been seeing on social media and I've been <laughs> hearing. What's this about this 2 0? Well, I don't know, but they should also remember. I've, I've seen House of Folk play that are cross posted, but they really struggled. Yeah. Against Elmina Sharks, they really struggled. Mm. But they were able to grind results after Elmina Sharks got a red card. So I'm looking at Olympics. Going in there with a well-rehearsed strategy to frustrate House of Folk and make sure they get one over them again. Look, yeah, I'm pretty confident the best for House of Folk would be a draw. Wow. But have you heard? It's all over town. 2-0, two 2-0, nil, 2-0. Two nil, two nil. What's about the 2-0? Uh, have they gone to consult? Have they gone to see the oracles? Or? <laughs> they used to say, I have you, we are going to ask the old lady. In right. The house. So the 2 is a scoreline. Well, that, whether it's going to be 1-1, one, one, or two deal to Hearts or two deal to Olympics, we don't know, but they keep saying there's two goals in the game. Okay. Olympics did that two nil yeah. to them. Hold so on, they want to, to, to reverse that one. Okay, let's let's go to Tuck Riley and uh, another caller on the line. Hello. Welcome to yes, the GPO headquarters. 
Yes, my name is Daiwil. Casa uh, didn't mean to. Beating Olympics is a communal labor for Accra House of Book Supporters. <laughs> you see, Kotoko has always been going to the African Cup without bringing anything and has taken this trophy to communal labor for the whole nation wow. so that we can go to Africa and bring glory to the nation. <laughs> so beating Olympics on Sunday is a communal labor. No two ways about the two nil, and we are going for a revenge. Wow. That's thy will. He says it's communal labor <laughs> because, you know, anytime hearts get to the apex in mm. Africa, they bring something. Not quite true statistically, but mm. I get what he's yeah. trying to say. When they inform mm. and they go to Africa, they do normally get the rewards. And uh, it'll be quite interesting. And we're, what, 10, 10 years, right? We're mm -hmm. celebrating Hard's African triumph 10 mm. years ago. Yeah. It's so decade. maybe. Mm. But, yeah. Of course, House of Folk will go into that game as favorites. Overwhelming favorites. But they are playing against the Wonder Boys. They must be careful. Look, I love the way Buedu is speaking game after game, saying that we are looking at our opponents game after game and playing against Olympics again. He wasn't there when Azofog lost 2-0. He will come in with, with, with different determination and different game plan altogether. Okay. Uh, we had Ashaiman. We went to Takradi. Well, let's go to the Ashanti region. Uh, Akwesia Champong, hello. Are you there? Hello. Hi, you're welcome. On to the GPO headquarters. What do you have to say? Uh, yeah, good, good afternoon. Yeah. And to say good afternoon. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, this Olympics. And it has football and the same kind of style. What's your Olympics? Special hats? Uh, has, has special Olympics one for uh, you? Uh, has special Olympics. Scoreline? Uh, has, it's one uh, one uh, one. Uh, but what is will be I see two, two, two. I don't know. They also one. Uh, I have one there. One there. No. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, even from the Ashanti region, uh, the stronghold of Kotoko, they're saying hard to win. But this time, one nil. No. There has been surprises galore in the Ghana Premier League, yeah. Like I'm saying again, House of Folk, better watch out. Olympics will be without Glass and Awaku. They will be without Samuel Ashikwe. But they still have Quite the men. Presence. I mean, Charles Dansu has been phenomenal for Olympics anytime he gets the chance, scoring three goals. There's still going to be Maxwell Abbey. But the leadership of Awaku is huge, it's a huge miss. He's not just the, he, he, he doesn't just play, he's the coach on the pitch. He's the orchestrator, you know, set pieces, free kick, you know, he, he draws fouls. That's. That's a 20% of your game gone, but I could be wrong. Uh, let's go back to Accra, Kwashiman. Uh, Jimmy, hello. Yeah, hello. Yes, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, this is Jimmy Kwashiman. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, now, uh, Olympics are going home very, half of of is varying Olympic big hero. Three. You know, they, you know, they wounded us. When they met us, by this time we are going to destroy them. They will never come back to life. This is a seeking phobia. That is, that is, that is, that is. What? I can see you. 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 Charlie. Okay, uh, hats by fit the Olympics. Yes, pasa, yes. Pasa, pasa. yes. The, the, the hats guys are so confident. Yeah, yeah, very, very confident. But where the Olympics guys? Come on, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, and nobody's talking about the Ashanti Derby. Maybe the Kotoko fans don't have that much confidence. The Olympic fans traditionally don't, they make noise at the stadium, don't they? Well, well between House of Folk and Olympics, and between Kotoko, fans and, are loud. And Kotoko and Ashanti Good, I think the House of Folk Olympic game is, is bigger. Right. Because, I mean, Olympics lie third. And because they beat them in the first round. Exactly. So it's, it's revenge time. But that's where it's even more dangerous for Kotoko, for, for House of Folk. I mean, Olympics are beating you already. They are more relaxed. They, they, will, they will know the approach in which they will have to bring on board. They will know the game plan and how to play House of Folk. They've seen how House of Folk struggle against a well, you know, brilliant team. Team that are, you know, the, the unity at the back. Team that comes with a certain game plan. I, I, I saw as a, a folk struggle against Almina Sharks. Okay, I, um, let's go to Ablekuma, where Amankwa Richie is on the line. Hi. Uh, hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Good. Yeah, welcome to the GPL headquarters. Which team are you going yeah. for? Yeah, I'm going for Kotoko Like, I've been hearing or I've been listening to your 
um, your discussion. I think it's the best program. And what I would like to tell the House of Group is that they should calm down because this is just the beginning. And the match between Kotoko and how you're going to determine who's going to win the league. But how to work as a human to a Interesting. Uh, it's quite clear. I mean, uh, the, the jury is out there. The mm. verdict is quite clear. But we have to wait till Sunday, mm. uh, Saturday, Sunday, to find out. Nobody's talking about Midiama Karela. That's the Western region. Big derby as well. Big well, game. But I think it's because Midiama have shot themselves in the foot with that poor result or poor run of results in the, in the past week. What weeks. did that guy say? He was a hard forecaster? <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. But I, I think they, they, are, they are feeling... You know, the, the heat now has to focus on song. They, they are on top of the Ghana Premier League, and it's so exciting. I think they know that with the win over Olympics, the job is almost done because then you have a, a cushion before you meet Kumase Asante Kotoko. And when Hearts of Voka inform, usually Kotoko disturbed them. Exactly, but they, they, they are having the a other way around. They are having a run of <clears throat> wins, and that streak is what is making the fans feel good. But they are also going to play. A three-match streak that they will need to win. Okay. Uh, let's hear from Akpache in Adenta. Akpache, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's your take? Yes, my name is Akpache from Adenta. I beg your pardon. Uh, is your... Uh, Jude, is he saying that because uh, Great Olympians won a face against Hass of Fusu, this time around they are going to win again? No, it's not going to be possible. <laughs> You know what's going to happen? They will mistakenly get the first goal. Has of Folk is winning this match 3-1. 3-1? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Not 2-0. No. Okay. So he, Akpache says 3-1. <laughs> but the fact that Hards lost the first leg doesn't, mean they will, doesn't give they, they will Olympics lose at all. But, but yeah, I, I think they are happy because there will not be any glass in our core on the field. There will not be Samuel Ashikwi. But tell you what, yeah. Mudasiru will be on fire on that day. If he starts. He will, because obviously they will have to put somebody who will give Muhammad al Hassan and probably Robert Adosso at the pressure so that they will not have that comfortability to search forward and join the attack. I'm pretty sure Coach Anna Walker, probably the best coach in the Ghana Premier League, as of now, by me, will mount up a strategy to frustrate House of Folk, trust mm. me. I know people watch you will be saying, but the statistics do not show that. Very quickly, 10 seconds, why is he at the moment the best coach as we approach the last end of the GP? I mean, he took a team. Nobody thought they could do that better. He's maintained the focus and momentum. Olympics have always been in the top three, top four. And for me, for this man to have done that, you see the number of points he has chucked for Olympics. Great, 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 great coach. I'm sure the debate will continue. We'll have one program that looks at all the coaches, and you can also call in and tell us your coach of the season when we get almost to the end. Our time, unfortunately, is up. We'll be bringing you more. Keep watching out for the latest news online, on radio, on television, the GPR headquarters. And, of course, we have some goodies as well for you as far as international football is concerned. The Black Stars of Ghana in uh, Japan, Korea, you know, against Ivory Coast, and, of course... Uh, which is the other team, Morocco, mm -hmm. will be bringing you those matches right here on Max TV. That's it for now. Big thanks to Jude Echampong, the prof, bumper to bumper. Let's do it all over again. Stay tuned. Bye for now. Entertainment and more.